Today, we're diving deep into Luffy's ultimate dream and the hidden foreshadows behind it, as well as introducing a fresh theory about it. In Chapter 1060, the Straw Hat crew discovered the end of Luffy's dream, but the details are still a mystery to us readers. Now, there's some intense discussion about how Luffy's ultimate dream ties into his goal of becoming the Pirate King. I'll be breaking down this theory about Luffy's dream in detail for you guys. If you find this analysis intriguing, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And hey, if you've got a different theory or perspective, drop a comment and share it with us. Just a heads up, this video contains spoilers up to chapter 1060, so be cautious. Let's jump right into it. I'm gonna be King of the Pirates. That's the biggest declaration in One Piece history, and Luffy's ultimate goal. What lies beyond becoming Pirate King? That's Luffy's end of dream. My only regret is that I won't be able to see the end of your dream. In Chapter 574, Ace's final words before his death were the first hint at its existence. Even after crossing the 1000 chapter mark, the specifics are still under wraps. Many theories about this end of dream have been proposed over time. Today, we're going to pick apart every detail that might hint at Luffy's dream and present a hypothesis we've come up with. So, what exactly is Luffy's end of dream? He might be saying, all right, I'm gonna buy every country in the world and create one free nation. Disagreements? Totally welcome. But I believe if you stick with me, you'll see where I'm coming from and hopefully agree. So stick around to the end. All right, first things first, let's look at the conditions this end of dream should meet. We've got four major points to consider. It should be the same as Rogers, the reactions of everyone who heard the dream, what lies beyond becoming the Pirate King, the conversation with Uta. Let's break these down one by one. First, let's talk about the first point, being the same as Roger. It's the words that the Pirate King said. This is Yamato's line in the 1000th episode when he heard the end of Luffy's dream from Ace. As you can see from this line, Roger was saying the same thing as the end of Luffy's dream. Incidentally, Yamato had been reading Odin's voyage diary, so it is believed that Roger's words were written in it. Also, Roger's words have been depicted before. That's Shanks' line in the 506th episode. Mr. Rayleigh, I was really surprised. There was a kid in the EC who said the same thing as Captain Roger, his words. From this line, we can consider that the words of the end of Luffy's dream are those of Roger. Furthermore, in the 966th episode, there is a scene where Roger says something to Odin and Whitebeard. Then I will. And guess what? The positions of each band-aid and the composition when young Luffy told Ace and Sabo about the end of his dream are exactly the same. From the above, we can say that Luffy and Roger had exactly the same dream. So what was the purpose of Roger who went out to sea? This is Roger's line when he found Rayleigh in the 603rd episode. Do you want to turn the world upside down with me? Roger went out to sea to turn the world upside down. From this, we can say that the end of Roger's dream was to turn the world upside down. However, although Roger became the Pirate King, he could not turn the world upside down. In other words, Roger could not achieve the end of his dream. I will clarify later why he could not achieve it. What can be said here is that Luffy's dream is also something grand like turning the world upside down. Next, let's look at the reactions of everyone who has heard the end of Luffy's dream so far. The first one depicted was the childhood Ace and Sabo. Ace was a bit fed up and said, what are you going to say now? And Sabo was laughing and said, I'm looking forward to your future. Furthermore, in chapter 966, the reactions of Whitebeard and Odin who heard the end of the dream from Roger. Whitebeard bursts into laughter saying even a kid can dream, and Odin was so astounded that he was lost for words. And in the 1060th episode, the individual reactions of the Straw Hat crew were revealed. Zoro said, what? Nami said, eh? And then said, that's like you. Usopp said, no, no, you can't do that. Normal people don't think about such things. Sanji was laughing and said, Chopper, check his head. Chopper was moved and said, wow. And then, that dream is nice. Frankie said, that's awesome. Robin was silent and stunned. Brooke said, that's too interesting. Jinbei said, what did you say now? He was so amused that he was crying as if it was not someone else's business. And the reaction of Shanks that was spoken by Luffy in the same 1060th episode. I wonder if he was laughing. Shanks was crying. The tears of Shanks are not so much that it was funny enough to cry, but rather that he was moved by the fact that he said the same thing as Captain Roger. 
Above is everyone's reaction so far to hearing the end of the dream. If we summarize these, it would be something like this. Outlandish, childlike, and possible if you think normally. Another key point to note is that the end of Luffy's dream lies beyond becoming the Pirate King. As explained at the beginning, the end of the dream lies beyond becoming the Pirate King. There are three major depictions related to this. The first depiction is the scene where Roger talks to Whitebeard and Odin. The government is saying don't go to the last island where a huge treasure is rumored to be. The rumors of the treasure become more realistic. Once we arrive, we'll be the world's number one pirate group in name and in fact. That's right. And then I... As you can see from Roger's words, Roger's end of the dream lies beyond arriving at Raftal and becoming the Pirate King. And what Roger was seeking at Raftal at that time was the huge treasure, right? So it's highly likely that Roger was trying to achieve the end of the dream by using the huge treasure he acquired at Raftal. The second depiction is in Chapter 22, Find the One Piece and Buy the World. Gaiman, a mysterious person living on the island of rare animals, was depicted in one episode between the Buggy Arc and the Usopp Arc. Luffy, who was told by him to find the One Piece and buy the world, responded, yeah, I'll do that. From this, it can be said that there is a high probability that the end of the dream is connected to using the huge treasure found at Raftal, the One Piece. Moreover, Luffy is a habitual dine and dasher. Is it possible for such a young Luffy to come up with the idea of buying the world? There's also that question. However, there's a phrase that almost always comes up when Luffy dine and dashes, a phrase well known to everyone. That's right, it's pay with treasure. I'll eat and pay with treasure. When he was in Fusha Village, Luffy was already using the phrase pay with treasure. This is evidence that even at the time, Luffy had the idea of buying something with treasure in his mind. This leads to the idea of buying something with the huge treasure found at Raftal. By the way, Gaiman's words about buying the world. This phrase, which suggests domination, is the opposite of Luffy's character who loves freedom. So it's likely that many of you felt out of place when Luffy accepted it without hesitation. We'll explain more about this later, but it's the thought that Luffy wants to buy the world not for the sake of domination, but for the sake of freedom. The third and last depiction is the dialogue between Luffy and Frankie in Chapter 1060. I might be able to do it if I become the Pirate King. You'd have to at least become the Pirate King to do it. As can be seen from these two's dialogue, the end of the dream is merely a stepping stone for the Pirate King, and it's something much bigger in scale. But just because he has become the Pirate King doesn't mean he is guaranteed to achieve it. Here I'd like to touch on what the Pirate King means to Luffy. This is well illustrated in Luffy's words in Chapter 507. I won't dominate anything. The one who is most free in this sea is the Pirate King. For Luffy, the Pirate King is the one who is most free in this sea. This means that the word freedom is a very important keyword for the end of the dream that lies beyond the Pirate King. By the way, on the cover of Jump Issue 42, where Chapter 1060, when Luffy talks about the end of the dream, was published, in the center, there's a drawing of Nika Ruffy, and there's the words, Most Free. This could be a hint from Mr. Oda that Luffy's end of dream is related to freedom. In conclusion to our discussion, there's an arguably most crucial depiction. It is the conversation between Luffy and Uda as depicted in the movie Film Red. When Uda asked Luffy why he wants to become the Pirate King, Luffy's answer was, to create a new era. The new era Luffy wants to create lies beyond the Pirate King. In other words, it can be said that his ultimate dream is a new era. And what exactly is this new era that Luffy wants to create? If we knew this, we would naturally understand his ultimate dream, but unfortunately, it was not revealed. However, there was another incredibly important depiction. It was featured in episode 1030 of the One Piece anime, which was broadcast as a tie-in to the movie Film Red. The line Luffy says when Uda asked, What's your new era? I want to adventure around the world. I want to go to various places, meet various people, and eat various kinds of food. It is believed that this is Luffy's new era and what his ultimate dream represents. However, everything is turned upside down in the conversation that follows. When Uda says, that won't change the world, Luffy replies, I see, I'll decide eventually. The world won't change with the adventures, encounters with people, and eating various things Luffy mentioned earlier. The new era, the end of the dream, can be said to lie even further beyond. And since Luffy also said he would decide eventually, his ultimate dream was not determined at this point. However, Shanks was listening to Luffy's ultimate dream. 
From this, it can be inferred that the timing when Luffy decided his ultimate dream was between this conversation about the new era with Uda and Shanks' departure from Fusha Village. It's confirmed to be during this time. However, it's hard to imagine that an ultimate dream would suddenly be born out of nothing. In other words, it's natural to think that there was some kind of triggering event that led to deciding on an ultimate dream. So what could that event be? There are two major events that happen between the conversation with Uda and Shanks' departure. They are the parting with Uda and the Higuma incident. Firstly, about the parting with Uda. As depicted in the movie, Uda disembarked from the Red Hair Pirate ship and was left behind in Elygia. Luffy, waiting for Uda's return in Fusha Village, seemed unable to hide his loneliness at Uda's sudden disappearance. And the second is the Higuma incident. I'll skip the explanation because it's self-explanatory, but in summary, Luffy came to know the greatness of Shanks through the Higuma incident. These are the two events that happened between the conversation with Uda and Shanks' departure. However, as I explained earlier, the key word for Luffy's ultimate dream is freedom. Honestly, it's hard to see how these two incidents would relate to freedom. But as I've been saying, there must have been an event during this period that acted as a trigger for Luffy to decide on his ultimate dream. That's why I want to focus on a certain depiction this time, which is this. The scene where Shanks, with the setting sun in the background, is holding up his straw hat and speaking to Luffy. This is a single frame depicted in Shanks' flashback upon seeing Luffy's bounty poster in episode 1054. At this time, Luffy, uncharacteristically, has something that looks like a newspaper in his hand. From this, it seems that Shanks is telling Luffy about his experiences outside of Fusha Village and about the outside world. Also, in the SBS of Volume 102, in response to a reader's question, when and where did Luffy learn the word Pirate King, Oda Sensei answered, he learned it from Shanks. Furthermore, the possibility that Luffy and Uda were talking about a new era is also likely influenced by Shanks. From these facts, it can be said that Luffy was taught the words Pirate King and New Era by Shanks. At the same time, Shanks might have also taught him about the outside world, and this story from Shanks might have triggered Luffy, and as he gradually learned about the outside world, his ultimate dream was set. So far, we have observed the descriptions related to the end of the dream, and I think the conditions for the end of the dream can be considered as follows. 1. Something Roger couldn't achieve. 2. Something so grand it could turn the world upside down. 3. Buying the world with a huge treasure. 4. Something larger scale than the Pirate King. 5. Something that may not be 100% achieved even if you become the Pirate King. 6. The keyword is freedom. 7. Something childish and impossible to think about in a normal way. 8. The story about the outside world that was heard from Shanks is the trigger. Although there are some that have similar nuances, these will be the conditions for the end of the dream that we will examine this time. With that said, let's introduce some of the credible theories that have been speculated so far. Based on what we have discussed so far, let's look at the contradictions in each theory. The main theories that have been speculated so far are divided into four. One. Great Banquet Theory 2. Great Bath Communal Bath Theory 3. Treasure Hunt Game Theory 4. Ending the Great Pirate Era Theory Let's look at each one. The Great Banquet Theory is considered the most likely in the investigation of the end of the dream. Luffy's hobbies are adventure and banquet, and Mr. Oda has said he wants to end with a Great Banquet. The fact that there is a technique named Dai and Kai in Ace's skill list when he heard about Luffy's end of dream and various other evidences make it a very convincing theory. However, the conversation between young Uda and Luffy that I introduced earlier, what is your new era, Uda asks. Then, I want to go on an adventure in the world, go to various places, meet various people, and eat various foods, says Luffy. Then the world won't change, will it, Uda says. I guess, I'll decide it later, says Luffy. From this conversation, it is believed that Luffy's new era, in other words, the end of the dream, is beyond the adventure, meeting people, and eating various foods. However, the great banquet of this theory is within the range of meeting various people and eating various foods as Luffy said. In other words, the world will not change with this. Next, the second one. The great communal bath theory is very simple. Nami's line in episode 1060, that's just like you. There's nothing but a sense of discomfort in the idea that a large bath or communal bath would be just like Luffy, even if it might be like Sanji or Brook. And the third one. The treasure hunt game theory is about hiding the treasure found in Raftal somewhere and having people from all over the world find it. It's exactly like Roger, who started the Great Pirate Era, which seems like something adventurous Luffy would do. 
However, in this case, Roger has already achieved it, which contradicts the theory. Finally, the fourth one. The theory of ending the Great Pirate Era is the exact opposite of the treasure hunt game theory. However, in this case, the contradiction arises as to why Roger, who lived in an era even before the Great Pirate Era, would want the Great Pirate Era to end. In this way, we have looked at the credible theories that have been speculated so far, but when we delve deeper into them, they all contradict each other. So from all the depictions and conditions, we have derived a single hypothesis. That is, as I mentioned at the beginning, to buy up all the countries in the world and create a single free country. Let's look at what this means in order. The end of Luffy's dream that we have derived this time, that is, Luffy's wish to create a country without dominance, a free country. To be more specific, he wants to buy the world with the enormous treasure found in Raftal to help people around the world who are suffering from dominance. Let's compare this with the conditions mentioned earlier. Condition 1. About what Roger couldn't achieve. It seems that Roger didn't have enough time to accomplish it due to his incurable disease. As the ship's Dr. Crocus said, Roger had only one year left in his life. It was far too short a time to buy countries all over the world and create a free country. Next, conditions 2 and 3 about doing something so grand that it would overturn the world, and buying the world with enormous treasure. These are self-explanatory. And then conditions four and five, about it being bigger than the scale of the Pirate King, and that even becoming the Pirate King may not guarantee 100% success. The end of the dream to make all countries in the world into one free country. If you rephrase it, it's exactly the king of the world. Indeed, the scale is overwhelmingly larger than the Pirate King and Luffy's line, I might be able to do it if I become the Pirate King. And Frankie's line, you'd have to be at least the Pirate King to do that. Makes sense, doesn't it? It is important to note here that even if Luffy becomes the king of the world, there will be no domination. As mentioned in the sixth condition, the keyword of Luffy's dream is freedom. This means that the country Luffy wants to create is a country where everyone can live freely not just himself, and that he wants to be the king of such a free world. Also, the words king of the world has already appeared in the story. That's right. It was the ambition of Rox D. Zebek. The ambition of Captain Rox is to become the king of the world, Sengoku, and the person who seems to have inherited Rox's will is none other than Blackbeard, Marshall D. Teach. This is a very famous theory with various evidence. However, in the booklet Road to Laugh Tale that comes with Jump, the text, Rock's Will, The Threat of the World, is not yet dead. With this text, Rocks and Blackbeard are lined up, so it is almost certain that Blackbeard has inherited Rock's Will. Such, Blackbeard said that the cherry pie that Luffy said was bad was good. In addition, he often says that drinks that Luffy says are good are bad, and he is often portrayed in contrast to Luffy. Therefore, he is also a top candidate for the final boss. But if Blackbeard, who has inherited Rock's will, has the ambition to become the king of the world and rule it, he is the exact opposite of Luffy, who aims to be the king of the free world. In this way, even considering the contrast with Blackbeard, the connections are very neat. And Condition 7, about it being childish and impossible if you think about it in a normal way. It's unreasonable to think about buying all the countries in the world and creating one country. You can understand why Usopp denies that it's possible, as for the point about being childish, I would like you to pay attention to this description. In episode 585, the young Luffy and his friends leave a note saying, we are going independent, and the scene where they build their house in the tree is drawn. However, this depiction is one of the panels drawn in the digest right after Luffy and his friends discussed each other's dreams. Furthermore, in episode 589, they leave another note, and the content is as follows. The idea of creating one country was in Luffy's head from his childhood. There is also the fact that these depictions happened right after Luffy talked about the end of his dream. Therefore, the act of creating an independent state might have been due to hearing about Luffy's end of the dream. And finally, the eighth condition, about the story of the outside world that Shanks told being the trigger. I introduced earlier this scene where Shanks raises his straw hat and talks to Luffy who is holding a newspaper. At this time, I speculated that Shanks was telling Luffy about the outside world. However, it is likely that he was not talking about fun things but also about countries like Alabasta, Dressrosa, and the Wano country that are dominated by the world. This is because newspapers often report unfortunate incidents. Therefore, it is believed that there was an unfortunate incident in some country in the newspaper that Luffy was holding at the time, and Luffy asked a question about it, and Shanks explained it. In other words, the conversation between the two might have gone something like this. Hey Shanks, what's this? Monkey D. Luffy. Well, in that country, people can't live freely. 
There are many such unfortunate countries in the world. Shanks. Hmm, is that so? Then I'll buy all those poor countries and make them free countries, and I'll pay with treasure. Monkey D. Luffy.